Hello, welcome to the latest video in our Getting Started with O&M Profiler series. In this session, we're gonna cover custom products. These allow you to add in products you may use which we don't have on the system, such as GPPs. Uh, I'm not gonna go through every scenario in the custom products, there's a lot of flexibility in there, but what we'll cover is some key information. And of course, if you've got a specific custom product that you wanna create and you've got a few questions, don't hesitate to give our support team a ring and they'll help you set them up. Okay, so from the home screen, we're going to click in new custom product. Okay, and as with every other part of the system, you're going to fill in information on the right and work your way down the left. Um, you'll also see down the bottom here, you've got the option to share this custom product. It's probably something you want to do when you finished it and you're happy with it, but if you've got other users within your company and you're all going to want to use the same custom product, then you just put a tick in that box and it'll be available to them as well. Okay, so let's step through some of the basics. So in the provider, you can pick the provider that the plans with. What I'm going to do today for this example is create a Scottish Widows GPP. So you can create custom products for any types of quote that we have on the system. I'm going to do pension, but you can also do an ISA, a bond, whatever it might be. Scottish Widows pension. Let's just change that last bit, GPP. Now the next bit's important, product funds Basically, you can tell the system whether it should inherit the fund selection from a particular product or whether you're going to use custom funds or whatever it might be. So if I say we're going to base these on our Scottish Widows retirement account, you can add in some text in here. So if someone else is looking at a custom product, they understand how you've created it or why you've created it. I'll leave that blank for now because it's not important for what we're going to do. And we're just going to step through each of these options. So premium based charges, you're probably not going to change unless you've got a real old style contract that's got, you know, reduced allocation rates or anything, whatever it might be. So we'll leave those as they are and we'll go to the fund charge overrides. So here you're telling the custom product the annual management charge is charged daily. You can change that if you need to. Uh, you can also add in an additional product charge. So if there's a product charge on top of the fund charges, you just add that in here. Uh, and we're saying use the product funds. There may be scenarios where you're not basing it on an existing product, in which case you can pick fund charge overrides and add in funds. So if you do that, you can either add real funds from the system or you can add custom funds and create an entirely bespoke fund with whatever name, whatever charges, and it's irrelevant then what you pick in the new investment, it's always going to use this custom fund or this collection of custom funds for this custom product. So it's important to know that you can do that, but it's not what we're going to do in this one here we're gonna go back and change it back to product funds. Fund-based charges is the next section. Now in here, you can tell the product if there should be a reduction in the charges at certain dates. You can see that first one and you can specify a number of tiers for that. Or you can say if you've got a large fund rebate on it, and again, you've got the number of reductions. You can increase these bands annually. I'll leave them so they don't increase. And you can basically set the rates to be whatever you want them to be to mirror the product you're trying to create. And then in here, you're putting the reduction. So not the net AMC, but the reduction in AMC. There you go. So there's one simple example. Uh, this little checkbox here, what that means basically is when it's not ticked, as soon as you cross this 25,000 threshold, the whole pot is going to get a reduction of 0.5. If I tick that, only the bit above 25,000 is going to get that reduction. So that's the significance of that input. Um, next up, you've got policy charges. Now, depending on if you're creating uh, a pension product or something else or a drawdown one, you pick the different categories there. And hopefully some of these are fairly obvious. If there's an initial fee, you put that in. Initial policy charge, put that in. It's important not to put in your advisor charging in this point because you're going to add that on in the quote like you would for any of the other products in the system. So let's go into the ongoing charges and bonuses. And this is where you can tell the product about any other charges or bonuses that there might be. So you can add up to 10 different charges. I'm just gonna do one. Uh, we'll call this a platform fee. Obviously I'm not basing this on the real product. I've, I've just done that for illustrative purposes. Um, and then you tell it what type of charge it is. So a pound fee, a percentage of the fund, or even a bonus if it's applicable. So let's do a percentage of the fund. And as you can see, we're just filling these bits in charge monthly in advance and you can see the different options we've got so we could have this kick in after 10 years if we needed to however interesting the product shape gets it can be covered by the custom product 
and we're going to say that doesn't stop. So we obviously could have done this as the fun charge over and just put 0.1 in there. That would have had the same effect, but it's just an example to show you the different styles that you can do under here. Okay, so we've created our custom product now, but by default, custom products aren't included in the result set. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to a switching quote and show you how to add that in and how to make it always appear if that's what you want. Okay, so let's go into our previous switching quote that we've used a few times and head straight to results. Okay, and we can scroll through this list uh, and we won't find our GPP that we just created. So what we need to do is we need to go into product sourcing and filters. As you see, I've got this various criteria and let's clear all that down. That's from a previous example. And then we're going to add in product types. So significance here is we want to include our custom products as well as our profiler products. If I hit OK now, you'll see that our Scottish Widows GPP has come into the list. So obviously, you've made it very competitive with the charges we created, and it's top of the pops. Uh, what you can do if you always want that to appear is you can save this criteria as your default so you can say system products and custom check the user's default box and then every new switching quote i do going forwards is always going to include that custom product so you've got two two ways of doing it there basically if you only want it to appear for this quote you just go in and change the filter you can even then save it, you just don't make it default. Um, and then when if you've done that and you come to load it, you just click it here. And you can see the default one means that next time I do a switching quote, it's going to pull those products in or that product in by default. Okay. There you go, a very simple introduction into custom products and how to use them in the system. Like I say, if you've got specific needs for your custom product and you're not quite sure what to do with it, we're always happy to help. But in the meantime, thank you for watching.